All right, we're back. Let's move the hands to 815. I knew it was something 15. Oops. Your other left seek. Mm -hmm. Boom. Also, minor lurk mode because I burned my hand and got to rebandage it. Uh, happy holidays, yo. Hey, oh, I'm sorry, John. Jeez, that's, well, now I feel bad about winning. Still won, though, so whatever. It's cool. Take care of that hand. Went from 915 to 6, 615 and missed 815. I know, right? I went right by it. All right. <laughs> Grifter says hello. <LOL. laughs> Sorry, John. <laughs> you know I'm joking, John. <laughs> I hope you know I'm joking, John. That wasn't a sweet the leg friendship move, I promise. All right, so this is the part of the game that really slows down. Like, it's, I'm all for, like, slow narrative and pace, you know, like, if, if it needs to be paced that way. But if you don't know what you're doing, this part of the game can take forever. It can literally take forever. Um, so luckily I know a little bit about what I'm doing, so it shouldn't take too, too long, but it's still going to take a while. So we're going to try to get through this the, mo the best we can with the, the best I can with my memory of how to solve, you know, solve some of these puzzles and get through stuff. Um, but as you saw with that clock puzzle, I ain't very reliable. Jom Joe! Oh my god, when this hand is better, I'm gonna use it to win every drinking game from now to forever. <laughs> Whoa! Easy. Quick draw McGraw. Nothing of interest, okay. What's above? Oh, there we go. No. No. Get that thing. There you go. So those are the two things we needed. Does she have them both? Okay, good. Now we can leave. I don't think there's anything else in here. Uh, there are files in each of these rooms, and they do tell you sometimes the solutions for future puzzles. Um, so I'm, I'm probably... It's probably not good that I'm skipping those. But uh, each room, I think, has just like one key item for the most part. And then you move on to the next one. And I think this one, there's like a bathroom coming up. I don't think we need to go in there because I think you just go in there and you get like your first Molotovs, I think, like in that room right there. I think you get your first Molotovs and then um, and then that's it. And then and then you have to use them immediately. I don't think there's anything else useful in that bathroom. So we're not even going to bother. Oh, I love that. That's the, my favorite thing about fixed camera angles is sometimes you just walk into a room and you immediately look at the camera you know she pointed the gun right the barrel right down at us I do have some microfilm thank you nope, I want to insert something else yo I got you back son uh, but also love <laughs> thank you John uh, there's something right on top the seats Yep. Uh, oh, look at this, a floppy. I used to save my screenplays to these. I remember my, my friend Nathan in Florida, he was like, hey, do you got any scripts I can read? I'm like, sure, and I bring them over floppy disks. Uh, all right. Oh, one, two, three. So it goes uh, zero to nine, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, okay. Uh, to tweet, Seek is destroying another game on Twitch. Join the fun at... Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, that's something. I Was it Grifter? Did you make that a while ago? Or Cunning or somebody? So here's the part that can be tricky, too. If my partner, he was engaged in battle there, he might not have come with us. 
Luckily he did, because I, I think he didn't pull the, the trigger. Um, but that actually can happen sometimes in the game, is uh, you could go into a room and a leech could like climb on Billy, and then because he's like trying to pull it off, it disconnects his connection to um, Rebecca for whatever reason. And uh, and then he can't like, you know, he, he she moves through the door and then she's like, you're on the other side and there's no Billy. And you're like, where the hell's Billy? And you have to go back in and help him because he's being attacked by leeches all of a sudden. Hi, uh, Echo. Come, Bubba. Want to come say hi? Want some water? Go, handsome. And drink that water. Drink that water, Bubba. Uh, I think it was cunning. It probably it might have been cunning, actually. See, it would be it would be pretty neat actually too if 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 they do because I know they're I think they're remaking Resident Evil. They're getting like Sony's like oh we're gonna redo the franchise or whatever. Um, you stay here. Yeah. I could see that. I mean, I hope what they do is they like that's one of the things I liked about Resident Evil Seven was um was the backwards technology. It was like oh you have to watch these VHS tapes and of course there's the logic of like how did Mia hold a camcorder while she was being attacked and why would she? Why wouldn't she just put it down and try to get away or whatever? Um, you know, uh, that's uh, certainly a good question, but um, but I, I don't think it matters. I think it's just there, just it's not important like that. They don't want you to ask those questions. They're just like, hey, this is we got to get information to you somehow. Um, so it's like a suspension of disbelief kind of thing. But uh, I hope in the, when they remake Resident Evil, they do something like this, where I like the idea of like, all right, we're going to go to this mansion or this facility, and it has, it's been abandoned for like a decade, so, or two decades. So we have to find floppy disks to put into this computer to see what the file says. You know, it's like a technology that maybe this 19-year-old girl like Rebecca is going to be like, I have to do what? Like, the, I mean, the, obviously the... The premise of a floppy disk and it's just like a jump drive in a way it's like oh i just put this in here but it's old older technology um i like that the typewriters all over the place like to me that's just those are neat things that add character i think to this uh universe Ooh, you know he dead um i think go in here first Echo, have you ever read the Re Resident Evil novels? Only read a small part of the first one. Um, I've read all of the Resident Evil novels. I've read actually all the Resident Evil comic books. Um, and yes, I am. It's, it, I am definitely a fan, for sure. Uh, the the SD Perry novels. I think I've read each one two or three times, and the first one I think I've read five times. Actually, the day when I met Joe after work. Uh, Capcom flew us to uh, San Francisco uh, to play a demo of Resident Evil 7 called the Lantern Demo back when they were celebrating their um, their 20th anniversary uh, last year in like September of 2016 and it was really cool and I that's where I got to meet Joe and uh, me and him became obviously good friends after that and I started Twitch streaming like more and more after that because I just created my channel like the the week before I went and then ended up you know being on here more and more after that uh, visit and uh and i brought the first novel with me on that trip and i read it the we were only there for two days and i read the entire book um i think i read the flight there was only 45 minutes uh but i read like 
three chapters on the plane, I think. And then that night I was so excited I couldn't sleep. So I read like seven more chapters. <laughs> and then the next day, and I vlogged the whole thing. So there's like video of me like walking around San Francisco at like three in the morning, just like too excited to go to sleep. Cause I'm like, oh my God, tomorrow I'm gonna like meet other Resident Evil fans and I'm gonna like get to play this game. And it was just, it was a good time. Um, but yes, I, I have read those novels. Uh, they're kind of goofy. I don't think they hold up. Although the first one was still really fun to reread. I think the first one holds up. I actually like the first one a lot. Um, and actually the second one is pretty good too. The one based on Res Evil 2. Uh, unfortunately for me though, I think the ones that take place in between, there's like Caliban Cove and Underworld, I think are the, the two that like uh, Caliban Cove is stars Rebecca and a guy named David who, who you kind of meet. At, you know, like as mentioned in the first game, uh, the first book, and then he kind of gets fleshed out more. And a guy named Trent, who you meet in the first book, and he gets fleshed out more in Caliban Cove. Um, it kind of follows Rebecca, and she goes off to this island where there's like aquatic creatures, and uh, called the Leviathans, and she's like has to deal with that and zombies that are programmed, and they can use submachine guns really weird stuff um that one in underworld i didn't like too much underworld was pretty much like an underground lab in the middle of nowhere and it was like a um i don't know like smart tyrants or something like that i can't remember um or hunters or i can't remember it was like a they took like two or three resident evil one monsters and made them superhuman uh more superhuman than they already are and it, it starred um i think rebecca and leon and maybe claire was there too and david and i think they started to set up like a, a like a relationship between Claire and David, I think, or Rebecca and David. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, those books are, um, some of them are kind of bad. The Nemesis one is a good one. The Code Veronica ones is okay, but unfortunately it was based on Code Veronica and not Code Veronica X. So it doesn't feel complete. It doesn't feel like a full story. Um, because obviously there's extra scenes they added for Code Veronica X, so it's like, oh, I would have loved a novelization of that version with more Wesker and more other things. Um. All right, so this is where we go as Rebecca, and we have to get that green chemical. Can't remember if there's anything else in here of use. I don't think so. Just that sheet of paper, which we're not going to read, and those health sprays, which we're not going to use. All right, cool. Speaking of res, what's fav What's your favorite and least favorite Res Evil game? Um, my favorite Res Evil game, like I said, it's a coin toss between two and Code Veronica. Depending on what day of the week you ask me, it's probably one of those two. Uh, my least favorite might be this one, although I enjoy playing this one more than I do Res Evil 6, so maybe 6 is my least favorite one. What I like about 6 is I feel like there's value in the game from a from a purchasing standpoint. When I paid $60 for that game, I wasn't mad because there was plenty of things to do. You played as Chris, you played as, um, as uh, Leon and his storyline, you played as uh, Jake and Sherry, um, and you played as Ada. So you had a lot to do, uh, like essentially four full playthroughs, even though some of them were recycled levels and everything. Uh, it still felt like four smaller games in one game. And I liked that. And there was no like goofy DLC to add more story like Resident Evil 5 did or anything like that. It was just, here's the game. Here's the storyline. Um, you know, hope you like it. And, uh, and I'm like, all right, from a value standpoint, and now that it's re-released at $20, it's a steal. So the value is there for that game, I feel. Maybe more so than this one. But uh, story-wise, they're both kind of poopy. Like, both games are kind of poopy. So I, I don't know. I... I if you're not, and that's assuming you're not, I, th I think we could all agree. Maybe Joe after work might disagree with me. Resident Evil Gaiden is, is probably the worst Resident Evil game. Uh, Resident Evil Gaiden, if you've never played it for the Game Boy Advanced, I think it was, is a game where you play as Leon or possibly a, a, a clone of Leon or a, I don't even know, or it's so weird. The story's so weird. Um, so there's that. And then there's, um, 
I just I hate going down in this basement. I always die down here or get poisoned or something. So I'm gonna save real quick. Um, but yeah, uh, 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 Resident Evil Gaiden's at atrocious. It's it's not a good game at all. Uh, even for the Game Boy. Even if you're like, oh, but it's a Game Boy game. It's like it doesn't matter. Uh, it's it lose it gains no points from me. Uh, and I think I said I think you play as Leon and. Who's he? And Barry, right? Barry Burton's on it. And it takes place on a boat. Like, Resident Evil just loves visiting boats. Uh, there's a scene in, I think, Survivor, where you're briefly on a boat. Um, and then, yeah, I know you're on an island in that one. Um, there's a, what was it? What was the gun game called? Um, Dead Aim. Dead Aim takes place on a boat, uh, or some of it does. Uh, Resident Evil Revelations takes place on a boat. <laughs> Uh, they definitely got into boats. Resident Evil 7 has a boat in it. A whole level part of the game takes place on it. Uh, Joe After Work, see, I knew it. Joe After Work loves Resident Evil Gaiden. Oh, shit. No! See? And that's why I get poisoned. Because, uh... Oh, good. I'm not poisoned. Because I aim at the ceiling, and then it drops down. They're both dead. Whew. Thank goodness that first one didn't poison us. That was luck. Maybe it's because we might be on easy mode. That's probably why. So much. I own it. I love that game so much that I own it. <laughs> oh, crap. I remember Dead Aim. Yeah, Barry and quote-unquote Leon. Yeah, see? So you're not even sure if it's even Leon in that game, um, which is beyond frustrating as a Leon fan. Um, Dead Aim. Yes, good old Bruce McGivern and Fawn Lynn, right? Is her, that's her name? Fawn Lynn? Uh, trust me, I've written a lot of Res Evil fan fiction, so I've learned all these characters. My favorite thing to do, because I'm, and I've, for years I've pursued comic book writing, I even was lucky enough to, to write a few of them, like independent ones and stuff, and I've always wanted to play in other people's sandboxes and universe, because I like taking those little characters, like... Could I write a Chris uh, Redfield story? Service. Absolutely, because that's my favorite Resident Evil character. And I would probably write him not incompetent for once, like not where he gets his entire team killed. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't do that to the character again, which is all they seem to do with him. Hey, you're the leader of a team. Oh, hey, you're one of only two survivors of that team at the end of the... It's like, okay, come on, tell a new story with Chris. Um, but uh, characters like Bruce McGivern, Ark Thompson, like I, I could write like entire comic book series <laughs> based on, based on those characters um oh they make it clear at the end it's l quote unquote leon All right oh yeah sure yeah cuz this is he like infected with something or it's like i don't care. yeah I, I can't remember i i played that game one time and um honestly it it's it, it didn't uh, it didn't end well. I remember getting to the end and being like, just wanting to smash my Game Boy. I was like, no. Bam! Holla at your boy. Quote unquote spo spoilers. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I'm I, I'm sorry if I spoiled Resident Evil Gaiden for you, <laughs> a game that's old and should never be talked about ever again. <laughs> I spoiled it so we don't have to bring it up anymore. <laughs> Joe, spoilers. I have already claimed this place for myself. And then they never mentioned like it's not. I don't even know if it's part of the canon because I, am very I mean they. They never mention it again. Like in the storyline. I think that's, that'd be a cool game, Barry teaming up with Leon. Um, but uh, not for the, not for the Game Boy Advance. I've also played the um, 
Deadly Silence version of Res Evil 1. I actually bought a Game Boy... Was it the... It was, a, was it the 3DS or 2DS? Um, that had that when it first came out. Uh, and also Revelations came out for it too. So I pretty... And, and Mercenaries. So I pretty much bought this thing because I heard about three Res Evil games coming out for it. it and... The Resident Evil Dead Silence game, Deadly Silence, was neat because Shinji Mikami always wanted Resident Evil 1, the first one, to be first person. Like, the, he really wanted that, like, feeling of the game. But back then, the PlayStation, the hardware couldn't handle it, and the game would be, like, five discs long. Like, I think there was a game that came out called Juggernaut, which was, like, a, a game like Myst. And I think it was, like, four discs for the PlayStation. Um, and I'm sure that company lost a lot of money making that game. Um... I like that game, Juggernaut. I thought it was awesome. It was like Silent Hill in first person, like but like Mist, so it's just like really creepy and weird. Um, so uh, I just, they just couldn't do it. They didn't have the technology. So when they did the Deadly Silence Game Boy version, they were like, oh, let's put some of it in first person. So you use the stylus, and you would go in first person in combat modes, and you would tap to shoot or swipe and use your knife. And it was awesome. I was just killing zombies. Loved it. Just for you, Seek, I'm doing a full playthrough of that game. Of Gaiden? Holy crap. If you do dude, I, if you do that, I will be in the chat. I will watch you play Gaiden. Um, I will watch you play it, Joe, if you do that. Just don't ruin the end of Pac-Man for me. I still haven't beaten it. <laughs> what? No spoilers for Pac-Man? All right, fine. I won't tell you. I won't tell you that he becomes a ghost. What? Yeah, the ghost that he hates that chase him through the whole game, he becomes one. Bet you didn't see that coming. <laughs> Grifter. Pac-Man dies. <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> Shit, spoiled it. I love that. Pac-Man dies. <laughs> Triggered! <laughs> oh my god, Pac-Man becomes what he hates. Eights. <laughs> what he hates, eights. Uh, ghost! Dun dun dun! I think we talked about this in our previous playthroughs of this game that you can um, you can actually not make it in time to save Rebecca. She will die. Uh, it takes a while. I think on easy mode it takes like ten. You got like ten minutes or something. Um, my first playthrough of this, I was pretty convinced she just fell in that room next to the the pit. Um, he looked like he was anticipating that shot. Like the game knew, oh, I'm gonna get hit as soon as I get up. So he was already leaning back. Um, my first playthrough of this, I remember not saving Rebecca. Way back when, on the GameCube. So I'm pretty sure now that we're completely done with Resident Evil 7, all the DLC have come out for it. Fans are still mixed on everything. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a lot of hate for that DLC. Um... Which is uh, understandable, I guess. But not a lot, of, just not a lot of people seem to like the DLC too much. Can't remember if it's that room or I always get these two rooms confused. Um, but I'm guessing Capcom they really need a win on their side for uh, for fans. So I hope they're putting a lot into Resident Evil 2 Remake. I'm sure they are, and that's why we haven't gotten any updates. I heard rumors that it's Rebecca. behind on scheduling and stuff like that, but. Sometimes those rumors just come from impatient fans who are like, I have a source that says the reason why we haven't heard anything in so long is because they're behind on the game. And it's like, yeah, they could be guessing and, and it could be true. But um, Thank you. normally when people are behind on stuff, they let you know because Capcom doesn't want them to doesn't want to lose fans waiting for this game. So I think they, they need a big win. I know some people are like, Capcom's become this company that kind of 
makes HD versions of a lot of their old stuff because that's the stuff people like. Um, and sometimes they make HD stuff of things people don't really care to get new versions of, like the Switch versions of the Revelations games. But those little mini games they added on to those looked fun, like the Super Rebecca. Ghouls and Ghosts with Barry Burton and stuff. Like, I kind of want them just for that, just so I can be a Resident Evil completist. Like Joe. Joe is a Resident Evil completist. Listen to this music while I talk about Joe after work. He's my friend, and he likes Resident Evil more than me because he owns more versions of Resident Evil Revelations 1 and 2 than I do. He's a, he's a real man. Just me, a little old woman over here with no lighter, and Joe over there with all the guns and all the pouches and all the lighters in the world. He's a real man. this time last year. Hang on, I'll pull you up. No, seriously, I like hanging here to my death. <laughs> Full circle. Joe says, my uncle who works for Nintendo tells me Capcom is behind, so it must be true. See, there you go. We got our source. Played the fuck out of Revelations 2 again and loved it. I like Re Revelations both 1 and 2. I hope Capcom announces a 3. That's what I want to see. I want to see a conclusion to the Revelations trilogy. Um... And, uh, and we got to find out what happened to Billy Cohen and Ark Thompson. <laughs> um, I'm a real man with bitch tits. Joe, Af Joe After, come on, man. I'm going to allow that comment. Nice. Oh, my God. Joe swears. Take screenshot. I'm a real man with bitch tits. Joe says. What do you mean? Uh, the idiots in charge. That's so great. Based on wrong information. <laughs> But now you have a, you can, you can clip that. I'll do it. I'll, I'll give you a guys a clean version. Um, I'll wait for village. the cutscene to end. I'll give you a clean version of me saying it. Um, so that way you, you guys can have it for your, um, your spank bank. Oh, I'm kidding. <laughs> Bet you didn't think that's how that sentence was going to end. <laughs> oh. I think for that joke alone, I can't upload these to YouTube anymore. <laughs> Fish hands! Art Thompson and Billy Cohen will be the best Resident Evil revelations ever. I think so, too. They could be like, our friend Leon told us to come here. That's my favorite thing in Art Thompson's game, Survivor. He's like, my friend Leon sent me information to come to this island. It's like, but who the hell is Art Thompson? Like, he's just some... Because I bought the, the strategy guide for that game because um, it had story elements that were cut from the game in the strategy guide because they couldn't like afford to make it or put, fit it into the final product or whatever so some of them were still in there um, in the strategy guide and they mentioned them like in in like you know parts of parts of the strategy guide and I and they they had said like he had some background with Leon where they worked together or they they were like in the force together uh, and so Leon, like, they went to a, the training academy together. And so I'm like, so Leon made a friend at the training academy. He was there for, what, like, a couple months? Made a friend at the training academy and then and then assigned him to go to an island full of tyrants? Like, it was the... Sheena Island is where they mass-produced um, uh, Mr. X's that were sent into Raccoon City for Resident Evil 2. Um, so it was off the coast of, like, you know, America somewhere. Uh, but, yeah, Sheena Island. And it was just so funny to me. I'm like, what? This random dude? Like, why tie it? Because they, they were like, Leon, every, he's everyone's favorite now. Resident Evil 2, he's, everyone loves Leon. And it was like, okay. Calm down. Um, yeah, let's go this way. So we'll probably just play this for like one more hour and then I'll, I'll um, we'll probably wrap it up for the night because I am getting a little, a little tired. I'm an old man. Oh, he dropped. I didn't even hear him drop. But yeah, Resident Evil Revelations 3 would be would be fun. I would like to see um, them complete the trilogy. I don't even know who I would have star in it. I guess I guess uh, Leon and Claire. Maybe you could reunite them. Um, 
and have like a Resident Evil 2 reunion. I really like that they, they did Chris and Jill in the first one, and then they did Claire and Barry in the second one, because that to me was, I did not see coming. I was like, Claire and Barry? So I actually like that more than if they would have just done Claire and Leon again. I, I actually liked the Claire and Barry thing more, and I liked how their stories intertwined, and I actually liked Moira. She was annoying as hell at first, but I liked her arc as a character. Um, so yeah, that was that was really neat how they did that storyline. Um, and how they tied it into Barry's family, because I was like, well, that's his whole thing in the first game. Like, we probably knew the most about Barry's, out of all the characters in the first game, their personal lives, we knew the most about Barry. Uh, Barry was the, the champion. He was the one who we were like, oh, well, his family's being held ransom by, by Wesker, so we know that about him. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, we knew more about him than, than Jill and everyone, so. Is this the key to that? Yeah, it is. Um, the, hey, best friend, mind going to this island where they make giant bioweapons that follow you to the end of time? <laughs> yep, that's, well, that's what he did. Take the dur Duralanium case? Yes. Um, now that I think about it, Jomley would totally do that to me. <laughs> well, I'm going to head out. Thanks for the stream, and I'll see you at the next time. Hey, Power, man. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, thank you for popping in here. Thanks for, for following. I will definitely check out your stream, too. I'll send you a follow back after this one's over. Uh, everyone, give Power Metal some love. Power Metal Fan 1, you've been awesome, dude. Thank you so much for being here. We will hopefully, I definitely hope we see you in a future stream. <laughs>